Hey guys, uh, Rami here with your second stimulus check update and second stimulus package update for Friday, October 30th. Hope you guys have a nice day and a great, great weekend. So yesterday I showed you the letter that Nancy Pelosi sent to Steve Mnuchin complaining about the status of negotiations and blaming the delay on the language for the testing plan. And now Steve Mnuchin responded. And oh boy, this is better than any TV drama. And it also seems like Nancy Pelosi sent the letter to the media before it even got to Steve Mnuchin and that really upset him a lot and he called it a political stunt. So let's see what Mnuchin said to try to get to the bottom of this and find some truth in what's going on. Just please hit the like button on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. So Steve Mnuchin tweeted saying, I woke up this morning and read Speaker Pelosi's letter to me in the press Enclosed is my response. Her all or none approach is hurting hardworking Americans who need help now. And he starts the letter by saying pretty much the same thing. I woke up this morning and read your letter to me in the press because you sent it to my office at midnight and simultaneously released it to the press. I can unfortunately only conclude that it is a political stunt. And it's true. I mean, political got their hands on this letter so fast. And I told you in my yesterday's video that the letter sounds too professional and so poised that it may be a political stunt because of all the finger pointing in it. Then he says, I have spoken with you almost every day for the last 45 days in an attempt to reach a serious bipartisan compromise that would benefit the hardworking Americans who have been impacted by the virus. Mark Meadows, Republican committee chairs, and I have dedicated endless hours to try to reach a compromise with you. Because your letter to me inaccurately describes the status of our current negotiations, I feel obligated to publicly respond. Oh boy, you can really feel the tension here. But in fairness, and this is in no way defending the Republican side or Steve Mnuchin or anything like that, but when he says that try to reach a compromise and a bipartisan bill, they really did compromise and they went up from pretty much $500 billion all the way to $1.9 trillion. At the same time, Nancy Pelosi didn't budge almost at all. Yes, she did come down the initial $3.4 trillion from the HEROES Act, but that bill was crazy expensive and definitely had a lot of fat in there. Plus, a lot of the reduction came from changing the duration of things, not really the value, not really the dollar value. But Republicans, for example, came up a lot on unemployment. They started with $200 per week for five weeks, then have it relative to your lost wages. Then they came up to $400 per week flat rate, and they even increased the duration. Nancy Pelosi has been stuck on $600 and didn't budge an inch. That's just an example. Then in the letter, he talks about the health plan issue. He wrote, as I said publicly, we did accept your proposal on dollars and language on testing as identified in subtitle C of the bill, testing and testing infrastructure. So sounds like they have an actual bill here because he references subtitles and stuff, but we don't have our hands on the text of that bill yet. Then he says that my public comments never referenced contact tracing. Nevertheless, we provided you a reasonable response that agreed to the funding level, but included more authority to the states as they have varying circumstances. Then he goes on to say, I would also like to highlight that while you hold up additional funding for testing and vaccines, the administration has made incredible progress funding both these areas with previous funding. Then he moves on to things that are probably more interesting to you and me. He says, we have also worked with the agencies and committee chairs to send you detailed compromise responses on the following items. Appropriations, small businesses, employee retention tax credit, rental assistance, broadband, agricultural and postal service. As it relates to state and local funding, schools, extended unemployment benefits, liability protection, OSHA, we have provided reasonable compromise positions on these major pillars you have refused to compromise. Again, give credit where credit is due. Republicans came up a lot on state and local funding. They wanted, I think, zero pretty much. Then they went up to 100 billion, then 200, 250, and now they're at 300 billion and Nancy Pelosi didn't budge from 436 billion. I already gave you the example for unemployment. Same thing with school funding. Republicans went up on that number. He also says, we reached out to work on a bipartisan basis with the Problem Solvers Group, but you have rebuffed this effort and said it has no relevance. That was messed up from Nancy Pelosi's part because that was actually a very nice bill that had boosters already built in it in case things get worse. It would give a second and a third stimulus check based on the situation and it would also extend unemployment benefits based on the situation in the future. 
I really like the problem solvers bill and I think it had everything we needed. Then he ends the letter by saying, while you accuse the administration of holding up the negotiations, you refuse to bring to the floor of the house standalone legislation to support airline workers, additional paycheck protection program payments to small businesses, and additional direct payments that we can fund by using already approved money that we have not spent. Your all or none approach is hurting hardworking Americans who need help now. This is the part that drives me crazy. They literally have money unspent and ready to go that was approved before that can cover support to airlines to prevent tens of thousands of layoffs. It can also cover PPP money and help small businesses survive instead of laying off their employees and shutting down forever. And now he says it could cover stimulus checks also. This is, this is just insane to me. That could really change everything for people like you and me, but she wants all or nothing. So what do you guys think? I know there are three sides to every story, one side and the other side and the truth. Who do you think here is leaning more towards the truth, Nancy Pelosi or Steve Mnuchin? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you all, every single one of you. And please hit the like button on the video, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notifications bell to be notified whenever I publish new videos and new content for you. Also, make sure to check the link in the description for the Yada savings account. It's a new savings account that is FDIC insured, and it gives you interest based on a lottery system. If you use the link below, you'll get 100 tickets when you deposit as little as $25 for a chance to win up to $10 million. Then you'll get a weekly ticket for every $25 you deposit. I think this is the future of banking as it encourages savings to earn more chances at winning a large prize. Also, don't forget to get your three free stocks from Webull potentially worth up to $1,600 when you deposit only $100, which is just like cash. You can take it out anytime you feel like it. All the links are in the description below. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.